everyone welcome back this is the floofcast this is episode seven i believe and uh, this is kind of the post new year's two months of why we have a month and a half two months why we haven't been on and we'll explain that in a little bit uh, i'm your host red and moderator and also my co-hosts are Draco. hello uh, new co-host, uh, Rari, who will be taking over for Nova, because Nova's very busy, and I'll explain that in a second. Hello! And Nova Links is still a host, but she'll be out off and on due to very busy. She's working four or five more jobs that she needs to be doing, but that's because she's working towards a new fursuit, and she still has school, so she's also updating to doing that. So, we'll get in on it, and, uh... I'll kind of explain why we were gone. <laughs> uh, the holiday seasons, we figured everybody would want to be with their family, and that's the thing, and Innova was very busy. So, we were meant to record last month, but everybody ended up getting sick at the same time, so it's kind of snowballed from there. So, we're getting back into it, and I hope everybody had a good New Year's, and uh, good Christmas and holidays and whatnot. So, the first thing we're going to cover is uh, Rari. Introduce yourself, tell everybody about yourself, explain who you are, what you do, how long you've been in the fandom. Okay, I got this, I got this. Hi, I'm Rari, and I draw furry art. Pretty much all the time, every day. Except for when Red and I play video games, and then we just play video games for days. Um, I've been in the fandom for... Oh god... Uh, 15 years? Well, so, like, yeah, Draco, we're there. We've, we've done this. Um, and I've been illustrating the fandom for about 11. So, yeah, well, no, I've been making money illustrating for, for 11 years. Um, I have a tiny human that is not here, thank goodness, because she would be loud. And, uh... I, yeah, that, that, I petered off there. That was me. <laughs> that, does anyone else want to say any words? Goodbye, Rory. <laughs> There's the, yeah. No. Not really. Um, all for information, as usual, will be in the description below. So, you can check out her artwork, or FA, Twitter, whatnot. My Twitter is full of of my regular life. My FA is full of porn. <laughs> Just put it out there. That's, uh, yeah, NSFW, so if you're not into NSFW. Not all NSFW. She does other things other than NSFW. I do, I do cute stuff, but I also do a lot of porn. Um, just... If you're not into that, just click the little button in the side of the FA that says that's if it, uh, you know, the thing that makes it safe for work. You, you know what else you can do to get around that so you don't have to load it in as NSFW? You can type sfw.forfinity.net and then wherever you want to go on the website. There you go. I don't know. I don't, like I've told Rari yesterday, my, my FA abilities are once a month, if I remember. Go in, <laughs> check my journals, check, um, pictures and stuff like that and I just because I don't put anything on there I'm not a person who puts things on there because I have no artistic abilities other than writing and I've been shelving my writing for a while now so because I've been mostly doing YouTube stuff and you can't put you you can but you can't in journals I, it's not really a YouTube style place that's what I've noticed you don't have a video section where you make videos and stuff like that which kind of sucks because there is a lot of furry video artists out there they they do they they do have an animation section but i don't do animation i know that's that's yeah it's not uh, quite the site for that get on it fa because <laughs> i mean i don't know how many youtubers are out there that are do, are furry artists and furry furries that do furry videos there's well, a lot of them latin vixen posts her video previews to FA and then links to the YouTube video. So mm -hmm. I might do that link link my FA to this because that would be cool. Yeah. That's Actually I don't know. I don't know if my listener if my 
art fans want to listen to me talk for days. Yeah, uh, I see why not. I'm a really boring person. Not that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's not that. Well, I know. I know other people in your life would probably get a kick out of it. I know you probably have other people that you know. Yeah. Oh no. I know a lot of people like that would be into this. No, oh. just, that's the whole thing. You share it and you go, hey, look what I did. I'm on a podcast too. Nah. Put it in your face. Check it out. Yeah. Oh. But anyway. Anyway. Well, that's a brief introduction, Narari. Yeah. You don't. You don't, you don't do anything else. Uh. Well, I have I, <laughs> I run a Patreon, but that's gonna get overhauled in the next little while. Um, oh, okay. I fursuit. I I get into costume and I be a gigantic caribou, and that's a lot of fun. Um, and I'm getting a puppy. Those are my exciting things. <laughs> that's okay. it. That's me. I'm I'm I draw. I'm getting a puppy. Yeah. Okay. I think that's good enough. Um, question number three, or topic number three, is how to be your own individual. Oh, man. Or you could tell I didn't write some of these. Because <laughs> that's like something I went on, like, be your own individual, sure. So who's this topic coming from? I'm probably guessing Draco. Sorry, I'm squeaking my chair. That's okay. Ha. So, anybody want to cover, you know, start off on this one? Cricket chirps? <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, Drago. I don't remember what I want to say. I made the, I made the topics like a month and a half ago. <laughs> so, if you guys, if, if I can touch on this. You can. It's open, these topics are open for whoever wants it. Okay, um, on being your own individual, there are a lot of people that, I'm going to say relationships, but I mean friendships and relationships and familial type relationships where people will gravitate towards particular interests because their partner or their friend or a family member shares them, and it's really not their interest They're doing it so they can be a part of the group. And sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's not. That's what I... That's that's where I see this topic going. What'd that mean? Is that where you wanted to start from, Draco? Or am I misinterpreting the topic? Uh, no, that sounds fine. It's just basically, uh... What we've covered briefly before, I think I made it to go more in depth of how to of basically how to find yourself in the group yeah have your own personality not not conform to society like example wear a tan suit with tan socks and loafers and be that person which is kind of ironic for the fandom because a lot of people kind of conform <laughs> so much to a certain degree as in I'm a wolf, you're a wolf, yay we're wolves, or the first off we're foxes or angel dragons and so forth. It's kind of hard in that niche but it kind of breaks away. Yes, you, you're an angel dragon but you don't look like telephone or radio. You're an angel dragon that has um, fluorescent colors or or you modified it to look like a robot or something like that. In 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 that aspect, I think that's another thing that you kind of want to understand is <clears throat> even in the fandom, you kind of need to make your own individual character and your own individual self and spin yourself off from there. Yes, you might stay a base animal, but you can still make that an- the uh, Sona your own individual. <clears throat> Yep, which is not that hard because two years ago I half asked the Sona, which is what I identify by now. It's still pretty unique. Oh, 
I've been having Sona problems since 2012. How so? I was... I was just a fox from 2003 until 2012. That's a long stretch of being just a fox. And then, and then it was like, now I'm a red panda? Question mark? No, first it was a raccoon cross. And it was like, okay, I'm a raccoon cross. But basically I just look like a red panda. Why not just be a red panda? Well, now I'm a red panda. But I'm not really me anymore. So why don't I be a fox and a red panda? And it's just been like one persona crisis after another. <laughs> Wee. Sorry, I'm spinning in my chair and getting dizzy. That's completely <laughs> fine. Uh, yeah. That's why I said we. It didn't make any sense outside of that. So I should. I figured I should explain. Oh. That's fine. Yeah, no. So. <laughs> ah. Oh, God. So, yeah. Uh, I th I'm not sure if that covered. Anybody else have anything to say on how to be your own individual? Any hints, help, um, other than, you know, be yourself. Don't go off and, um, you know, let people tell you how to be, you know, don't let the people tell you, oh, you need to prep, be a prep beer or whatnot. Just be yourself. Um, that's the thing about the fandom is we allow people to be ourselves. And, um, I think that's the best thing we could possibly do is... Just live by that rule. Don't just be one thing, be something else. I mean, you could be one thing, but modify that one thing so it's not just... Everything in moderation, right? Like, yep. share... In, in what I was talking about, share interests with people, hmm. but don't let those interests overtake what you actually are into. Right. I let that happen. How so? Oh, man, we're getting echo. Yep. But it's Okay. Anyway, so how so did you let that happen? Well, when Steve and I started dating, it was like, I jumped into a bunch of his interests. Right. And kind of like, I let him decide that we weren't going to have a dog. And I let him decide, you know, that we're going to go camping and all this other stuff. And I... I just fell into his activities while not keeping any... The only one of my own that I really hung on to was the art. Right. And that was because he was super passionate about it. But I kind of let myself not focus on the things that were interesting to me. I didn't know how to be an individual in our relationship. Because you wanted to, you kind of also wanted to, it's a new relationship, so you wanted to conform as much as, like, in any relationship, everybody does it. They conform yeah, to... they conform to their partner's ideals. <laughs> right. Which and is... Yeah. yeah, it's not it's not a healthy thing to do. So coming coming out of like out of stuff, it was it was really important for both of us to realize that we weren't we were doing things for each other, but not really for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So now Fever's gotten super into making beer, and I'm not super into making beer. I will help him if he needs it. But I'm not going to be like, oh yeah, let's make a brown ale, or let's make a hefeweizen, or all this kind of stuff. I'm like, okay, enjoy your beer. I'll be over here drinking my soda. That's my thing. Uh, I'm from Wisconsin. I can't say anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so, he's, he's the same way about the dog. He's like, I'm happy you're getting your dog. And I'm glad that you're excited about all the stuff you're going to do. But I'm not going to be interested in coming to agility tournaments or classes. I will take the dog maybe for a walk. But really, it's it's your dog, your responsibility, your passion. Do what you need to do. And I'm like, okay. So we both have things that we are passionate about. We have stuff that we're super passionate about together. And that's our ploy, our drawing, fursuit building. Excuse me. We're both really passionate about that, but we don't have to share passions, and we kind of let ourselves bulldoze each other into different things initially in our relationship. We didn't let ourselves be individuals, and that can happen with friends, too. Let me tell you what. 
Mm. <laughs> I've I've had I've I've accidentally bulldozed friends into certain things. That that was me doing it to them. Right. And well, well, they've like, one of my friends wasn't a furry, and I furried so hard at her that she became a furry. Oh, <laughs> yeah, but she makes she makes good money in the fandom now, so Yay. you know. Yay! She can't complain. She can't. Yeah. <laughs> she. She's not. She's she's backed up no, no. as she's. Did you ah. Skype? Did you Skype? Uh, she's backed out a bit as time has gone on, but she's still active and she still has a pretty good following. So, <coughs> I'm happy for her. She's right. in a place where she's comfortable. That's good. Yeah. All I'm saying is be an individual and don't let other people dictate what you're into. Whether it's as as a partnership or a friendship. So I'm guessing Fever is a cat person. Fever Fever is a I want to travel the world person. Ah. That's, yeah. Fever Fever doesn't want to have any responsibilities so that we can go and travel like we want to go spend 11 months in Japan. Fun. Um, so that he can go to the Hanbu and do his black belt stuff. Right. Um, but to go to Japan, uh, he and I would have to be married. And then we'd have to get um, a special exception for Molly because of her disabilities. And then if we were to bring the dog, it's a nine-month quarantine to bring the dog over there. And then it would just be two months, and then we're coming back. Right. So it's kind of like, we want to do this, but we can't, but we want to. And he, he just wants to be able to travel. And the kid and the dog really hinder us traveling. And he just has to accept that's the way it's going to be for the next six years. Because tiny humans, man. You can't leave tiny humans alone. Well, and, and the thing is also, um, the tiny human isn't bad, and the dogs aren't, especially since you're getting like a corgi, it also necessarily not as bad either if you're traveling within, you know, specific areas. Yeah, I mean, if, we're, if, we're traveling, bad. if we're traveling domestically, or even into, like, America, I'm Canadian, by the way, Canada, yeah, um... Traveling between the U.S. and Canada isn't a problem. Traveling to Britain isn't a problem. Traveling to Japan is a huge issue. Traveling to Australia is a huge issue. Not that he wants to go to Australia. I want to go to Australia. Why? Why do I want to go to Australia? Why do you want to go to the land of the death? Because hop deers. Well. Kangaroos, man. I, I have an affinity. F and, and so does Fever. Fever's new Sona is a wallaby. Mind you, we do have a kangaroo farm like six hours drive away that we can go visit, which would be super duper cool. <laughs> but and zoos. Yeah, but um, I want I really want to go to Australia because I like I like places like that, and no one can stop me from liking places like that. Oh, that's completely fine. Yeah, and stuff. Also, I want to open this bag of candy. And open the bag of candy. I don't want to be loud. Just open the bag of candy. We already had the rocket ship. Oh, candy. No, why won't the candy open? It's cheat day for me, so I'm allowed candy. Oh, I, I can't win. Why am I not strong? Okay, I, I won. All right. I guess that's good. We'll move on to uh, people you want to surround mm -hmm. yourself with. Ooh. I had to reword that. Hmm? Anybody? Well, should. Drake, you want to start off since you rewarded it? Oh, there's the Skype echo from my end. My end. Sorry. <laughs> That's probably me because I don't have anyone on headphones. Uh, no. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a loud noise. Are we ready? Yep. Candy! Okay, I'm done. Oh, no, we're not tracking. Sorry. 
I'm having I'm having a bad cheat day. Eating so much chocolate. Okay, so people you want to surround yourself with. Hold, Hold on, on one second. Okay. Back. Apologies about that. Uh, there was a bit of feedback, and we wanted to get that fixed. Anyways, we're back on the topic of what you want to surround yourself with. Uh, people you want to surround yourself with. Excuse me. Uh, I figured Draco, you reworded that, so we'll start it off with you. Uh, yeah, originally it was a month and a half ago, people that you can trust and not trust, but now I, due to recent things, I watch it. Basically, I'm thinking about the thought, you thinking about you have people in your life, friendly, not friendly, and even in the people that are friendly, they're kind of those to a greater extent than people we know more passive-aggressive and try to, like, control the aspects of your life even though they're just your friend. It's kind of like what we said earlier. Mm -hmm. That won't try to tell them to do this or that. Just remove people that are toxic to their life and be whatever and not try to impress. Like, we know people in the fandom right now if you even mention the taboo side, the prawn, porn, gif, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> yeah. The human side. Wanna, whatever you want to call it, they're like, I don't want anything to do with you. So they try to guilt trip you into being like, okay, I don't do that stuff anymore with friends. And I don't yeah. like people like that. It's. Well, there's a historical precedent for it in the United States. Yeah, I know. It's like, I won't push it on you, but you have to accept it. I mean, I've, people have made full personas on the Angel Dragon subculture because they are going out of their way to avoid you. Yeah. Wait, what? They're making Angel Dragon sonas because they're getting away from you? Yeah, there's, um... Reproductive organs. So, you can still make Yif on that stuff. I know. Am, am I, like, the only one who's like, thinks... Well, my brain goes there anyways. I mean, I can look at something and go, oh, porn. I, I'm sorry, but it's just, like... See, the, the thing that comes up is that... The, I'm going to say that it's a pretty East Coast way of thinking to try and curb down that sexuality side. But... I, th that's me generalizing, uh, just because of the historical nature of the East Coast being generally Puritans and the highly religious side of the United States and the West being kind of more liberal. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the stuff that's like no sex, the fandom doesn't have anything at all to do with sex, all uh. comes from... This, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure where I'm going with this, but, well, no, I am. Um... Like, the, the conversation that Kage gave an interview recently where he's like, furry isn't about sexuality and we don't have any more deviants than any other culture. And I'm like, mm -hmm. well, we don't have any more deviants than any other culture, but we do have a more open and expressive sexuality than most cultures. It's not that we're deviant, it's just that we're open about it. Yeah. I and mean... I think it's it's unfair to say that, you know, there, there is, I, I, it's unfair to make someone renounce their sexuality either, you know, because it, it makes, well, you can't, you, you just can't make people renounce their sexuality. If they're asexual, that's their choice to not involve themselves with sex. If they like most humans are sexual beings, you, you can't deny that. Every Almost everyone has sex at some point in their life. And, and, and I, I think what it, the statement that uh, Kage made was, it, it, it's a general statement. The thing that kind of makes it different, I see also as well, is you, if you go to a, an anime convention, there's sex in anime, don't get me wrong. There's a, it's, a lot, it's a lot worse than what's our stuff, really. I, in my opinion, you know, some of the tentacle stuff, it, it gets off-handed. <laughs> yeah. But, 
you, you'll see, like, people dressed up as anime characters walking around. They dressed up as anime characters. Yes, they may have short skirts or tight-fitting clothing, whatever. But you go to a convention, you will see, not all the time, but you'll see some people, they'll be wearing their fursuit, and they may have bondage gear on or, uh, you know, something of that nature where it kind of stands out comparative to someone who goes on an anime convention where you'd never know if that person's a sexual deviant or not. Or well, it, not all necessarily, well, another, and it's not... There's actually another topic about that, uh, or another outstretch from that, that I myself had to break from stereotyping, and it's one of those things, if you see some, if you see someone with their, uh, they have like a full suit and they have clothes over that suit, a lot of people think, oh, well, they're hiding an aspect of that suit. Their suit, yeah. Yeah, and it's like, no, they're not. They just might have clothes on their sona and they're living the part. Or or the nature of, you know, not just because we're anthro doesn't mean we have to run around butt naked. We have some dignity yeah. and shame. I mean, look at Zootopia. It's an anthropomorphic world, but 95% of the people in that world wear clothing. Then you go yeah. to the freedom section if you watch the, the new um trailer for it, there is nudist camps where they're completely naked where they're normal animal looking animals where they don't have clothes on so and that's in that aspect when it comes to fursuiting is yes you'll see people in you you'll know, see people both ways and and also some people just may have partials so they're wearing clothes because they yeah. have a partial but i personally it depends on what i decide but i think i probably would be clothed just because I like the clothing, you know, and like adding clothing to something. It adds another layer to your character. Yeah, and I I can't add clothes because with my Sona so far, there's like clean back spikes and the long tail that be like ridiculous looking. I think you're gonna go with your circle Sona as your uh, costume, not the full. I guess the point that. I think we're trying to make is that you can't judge a suit by its clothing. Right. <laughs> and a lot of the a lot of the MERS suitors I know they have two body suits and two sets of paws and like it's it's important for them to have that distinction so that they have one that they can wear out in public and one that they can do stuff with. And you I don't know of really anyone that goes out in a mer suit bodysuit unless they're totally socially inadequate in that regard. Uh just for clarification for some people who don't mindly know what a mer suit is, what is please explain. Okay, a mer suit is a fursuit that has been altered so that you can have sex in it. Ah, okay. The, yeah. The <laughs> I would say the be before everybody starts jumping on the guns and, and starting down running in the comment section below it's there, but it's probably like in any fandom, the five percent, you know, or yeah. the one percent oh, no. of the fandom. It's not like it's everybody not does it. No, 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 no. By all means, it is not the norm. A lot of people, a lot of makers, refuse to make mer suits. But that doesn't stop people from going uh, and buying fur and making their own. Well, and, and the thing is, I, the the way I see it, I don't care if you want to do that in your suit. Just I, I my th mindset is, you're spending two. One, if you get really bad, one to three thousand plus dollars, dollars or whatever suit. you're making on a fursuit, why the hell would you make it any more dirtier than you need to be? I know exactly. people, okay, I can understand people go out who swim in it, go in the snow, who climb trees, play sports, all that stuff. That's fine. That's just everyday life. But, th this, you know, getting into the sexual aspect of it and then doing all the other stuff to begin with. And there's people out there who don't keep the suit, you know, relatively clean and, no. and nice looking. No. Uh, do you really want to be walking around with a, a, you know, a tail, I guess I would say tail hole area, very matted down? I don't know. Well, that happens anyways. Like, you, well, your yeah, whole... it does. When, when you're walking in it, the, the fibers clump and it's it's super awkward. But... It's it's not worth buying a two thousand dollar suit to have sex in. It's not it's not worth it fiscally it's not worth it unless you have fistfuls of dollars. Right. <laughs> if you are making money hand over fist, I know a lot of us aren't, then by all means go run amok. But, but that's not 
the that's not the norm. No, it's not. And, it's one thousand percent not the norm. I mean, and it's just, it's. I guess people just you get that one that one person who has it in the you know in a, a group event like a uh, a, a convention. And everybody always drag gravitates to that one person, or that one person who's a diaper fur, and wears a diaper, and you just gravitate to that one person in a. Di- and it's like, okay, dude, you know, it's cool, but you also gotta understand, you're in a convention with thousands plus people, and people are gonna be looking at you, and if you have the, if you're comfortable with it, cool, great, but really, you're out in public, you know. Yeah, it's not. It's have It's a private decency. event. But it's not private. Pri- private enough for you to get away with that kind of yeah. bullshit. No, and it's just like you know, decency, folks, decency. It's like we're tolerant in the fandom. Most of us are. It just it seems a younger audience isn't. And but the thing is, you know, with respect to people around you, if if I was to come up, if say you're a person who's anti the Confederate flag, and mm-hmm. but you're a diaper fur. Would you rather be stand? Would you be feel comfortable standing next to someone with that Confederate flag suit? No, you probably wouldn't. Just the same way that person who's in that same suit probably is not as comfortable with you standing next to you in a diaper, let alone a diaper that looks like it's been used. You just gotta oh, keep it. That oh, c- don't go there. <laughs> you gotta keep I it have that a c- lot of friends that are that are into that kind of stuff, and I'm just like, do what you need to do, and just keep it in your pants, and don't. Dookie in it in front of me. <laughs> yes, please. But I please mean, no. But just <laughs> keep just keep that common the common sense up when you're at a convention or something public event. That yeah, especially especially the convention runners and owners don't expect them not to come up to you and go, hey, no, you, this is the one time thing. Don't do it again. You know, because it's it just really. You gotta make sure that people around you are comfortable, and we have yeah. enough stigma as it is. Don't get me wrong, but <laughs> yeah, it's just hey, hey, Red, keep it home. Hmm. When I say Dookie, does it make you giggle? <laughs> <laughs> I think it makes everybody giggle. <laughs> I just, I don't know where that word came from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our eight-year, our, our five-year-old self. That's where it came from. I five, I five, and I say dookie. <laughs> Woo! But yeah, it's just. Oh god. I don't like I said. I don't have a problem with the people who have those suits that allow you to have relationships in a suit, and I, for those and the knowledge of having relations, it's just like you're gonna be hot and sweaty as it is. Now you're in this additional thing, and it's like, oh my god, that's just. Ugh. I feel sorry for the said person, but hey, whatever kinks you're into is whatever kinks you're into. This, just... is, this is why I draw furry porn. Because I I can't I can't justify doing that in suit. <laughs> so I draw it instead. Because, yeah. you know, anthropomorphic animals get my rocks off. And it does for a lot of people. Yeah. I, it, sorry to say this, folks, but there's porn everything go to any any fandom out there's got porn it's yep. just the thing that makes ours different from say a star wars convention is as kage always says we make our own stuff we make our own aspects we don't rely on someone else to make it for us so we can go buck shit crazy if we really wanted to it just uh, that's actually the beauty of the fandom unlike uh George Lucas and Star Wars, you go to a convention, you have one thing wrong, a bunch of people will try to chew you out for not being right. like a true right. fan. But the fandom, it's so open. No one can say this, that, or the other thing. Well, the, only ah! time, the only time you'll get shit, and I'll admit to it, because I've seen a few fursuits that people have made that really, really... I mean, great for your first time, and if you enjoy it and you like it, great for you, but really, it should, they're just bad suits and in the you know it's not trying to be mean to the person but it's, it's, like, it's just beginning art like yeah I, anyone anyone who begins art or begins writing or begins building fursuits is gonna suck at first oh, of course so you just you gotta get over that artistic hump and people sometimes stop after their first one and they go this isn't what i envisioned in my head 
but other people, they, they go on. I think yeah. some of my favorite fursuit makers have started that way, and goddamn, goddamn, their suits are fucking phenomenal oh, now. Good. It took oh, them yeah. ten years to get there. Oh, yeah. But it it happens. I mean, like, and case in point, Telephone's first fursuit, in my opinion, was a mess. Compared to what she has now, if you've seen the really, like, the really, really beginning of her style, it, you could tell it's a beginning artwork. And she's improved over the years. But it's just... That's, and that's what we'll, Oh, God. If you go back in my gallery on FA, it's bad. It's bad, guys. <laughs> if you can find my Side 7 account or my fucking TV Nerd accounts, they're bad. It's just so bad. Um, <laughs> actually, that's that's true about people getting better. I don't. I mentioned these people before, but if you go back to a maker that's not really a maker anymore now, but uh, Mono Yasha from Dream Vision Creations. Yeah. If you've ever heard, if, I mean, in the fandom, he's out there everywhere. I don't see how people could have heard him, but if you've heard him, but ever. Both of you have heard of Boss Circle, right? Yes. No. I have. Uh, well, he's real big in the Circle community. He had his okay. head created by Mono. Yeah, he's big. That the fact that Draco didn't know him until recently when Nova pointed him out. He's he's one of the bigger Circle. Uh, other than Rin, he's he's a very big. He he's his Sona is a circle in the suit and top kind of like mafia gangster type it, in my that's the way I see it from the artwork but yeah he's um pretty anyway so but uh, they started out but uh Mono Yasha Dream Vision Creation started out so small like half their suits looked half ass when they first started their channel now they create these bases and these accessories for suits that a lot of makers use. Yeah, they've they've created a whole niche market for themselves, and it's absolutely phenomenal. I've been using them for our suit stuff, and I they ah uh, they they they've found so fursuit making in itself is a niche market. Dream dream vision dream vision. I think that's it. Uh, they've created. A smaller market making fursuit parts for fursuit makers and it's absolutely phenomenal what they've done they're a huge success story and I'm super impressed oh business mm. it hurt me when I heard they stopped making suit yeah but they're just going to do the parts that's the thing though I think what they I think they realized that you know their art I think what it was probably and I think a lot of artists sometimes do this, is they know when to stop their art. I'm, you know, they go, okay, I'm done doing this art, but I don't want to give up art all in general. I want to go to someone else and help them flourish in their artwork. So that I think that's why they probably went into the, the parts for... Makers. You know, suits. Yeah, because it, 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 not only can they say, I'm helping the community grow, but I'm helping the community grow, but still make money by just making niche parts yeah, for their suits. And the other thing, too, is they can turn around and go... I'm a part of that suit. Right. My my the materials that I've made are used in that suit, and it's phenomenal that the artist could seamlessly blend their style and ours and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. put this together. It's fantastic. Right. Anyway, that's me gushing about how much I like their stuff because I'm a weirdo. No, you're you're you you make suits, so it makes sense. <laughs> I'd be. Um. I think one of my favorite circles is Rin because it's the simplicity of it. It's not over the top. It's not, you know, just big, giant, beastie looking thing that wants to, you know, rip your f face off. And it's simplistic. He's capable of dancing in it. And it looks good when he dances in it. So that's the, that's the you know, plus plus on that. You can tell he really takes care of it, too, because the little fluffs over his eyes actually stay pointed all the time. Oh, yeah, he takes care of it. As you can see with him making those videos where he's got the tail cover and whatnot that he created himself. You know, he didn't go anywhere and go, I need a tail cover, I need, you know, for my suit. People were like, well, he just made his own, you know, so he can do what he needs to do outside and, you know, and not get his tail all 
damaged up and that's you, like I said there's we could do a whole section on suits and proper care and whatnot it because there's plenty of people out there who it, it's <laughs> become it's become like a cringe thing where you know <laughs> you look at us oh come on just brush your suit just brush it once put it run it through the wash just do it I mean you don't want you don't want to look you have a pet like a dog or a cat and you, and you feel sorry for that cat who's got all ma matted and or dog has got all matted and, and clump balls here and there you just like you want to you just want to take a brush and brush that poor cat because it'll make it feel better do the same thing with your suit yeah well I mm, <laughs> I I was doing I was doing a thing I was grooming my first suit the other day because we did a photo shoot last weekend mm -hmm. and uh, I'm sitting there and I've got this face razor Mm -hmm. And I'm shaving the backing of my fursuit. Like, because it's got pills all on the inside. Mm -hmm. And it, it's uncomfortable to wear. Right. And my roommate looks over at me and he goes, what are you doing? Isn't that going to hurt the backing? And I'm like, no, I'm just getting the pills off of the back. And it makes it so much more comfy to wear. And then I groomed out the fur and he's like, so none of it fell out? And I'm like, no, it's take care of your stuff. It makes it look better. It makes it feel better. Sorry, I'm ranting. No, it's completely fine. There's Ooh. this care I, and maintenance stuff that you can do to make it better. I think I found next week's con next uh, next cast <laughs> conversation because it's something that I think a lot of new and and continuing suitors need to learn. Yeah, um, how to maintain their suits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just I think <laughs> it. I don't own a suit, but even I know that, hey, you don't know, brush it out, wash it out. Especially if it's a full suit. You're running around in that thing all day long. It's going to get a bit manky. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I have stories. You don't want to be that person who's like, what the heck is that thing? Why? And you see the, the suit itself crawling across your bed. When you see your suit doing stuff like that nature or it smells like it could walk across your bed it's time to get out something and you know wash it, wash it and nuke it with things that are good for the suit and good for smell so it doesn't look like it's gonna crawl away yeah you know I mean come ah. on, guys you spent two plus we'll talk about it next to, week right one, yeah one to one thousand plus dollars on a freaking suit yeah we'll talk about it next time <laughs> All right, next topic. Um, this has been happening lately. It's been all over the news, and I mean all over the news. It just hasn't been <laughs> on. <laughs> it hasn't just been on furry news. It's been everywhere. The Tony the Tiger Twitter issue. Thoughts and comments. Um, I, I think I'll start off on this because I have a little bit of statement on this. A couple statements. One is we can't have nice things in the fandom, and two the Kellogg's company kind of did a bit of a PR faux pas. Can I, no, can I be a history buff right now? Yeah. Can I, can I just history at you about Kellogg's? You could do whatever you wish. The creator of Kellogg's cereal created Frosted Flakes and Raisin Bran and all of those kind of icky cereals in order to curb masturbation. Yep. That was his whole shtick, was yep. people shouldn't masturbate. It's a no-no. It's not yep. okay. Well, and and you his... should circumcise your children so that they don't masturbate. And that that's that's the whole reason why America does circumcision. Well, it's the whole reason why, you know, 80% of American males are circumcised. Right. It's not because they're Jewish. It's because fucking Kellogg said to circumcise your kids. And also there's a little uh, side <gasps> rant. Rant a little more history, back history to that. Uh, at the time, there was a thing called the vapors, and the scientists and the doctors believe that a way to cure a woman of the vapors is to stimulate sexual arousal <laughs> with uh, light wands and vibrators and things of that nature. So it wasn't uncommon place for a woman to go to a doctor and get her jollies off because she was feeling the vapors. Um, and Kellogg. Also, I believe he was a religious man as well. Pure wasn't too yeah. wasn't too fond of women going to the doctors to get their jollies off, so he created the Kellogg. Um, it was a treatment spa type house <laughs> thing, and made the cereal, the original fro the original flakes, and he added frosting sugar flakes. to it 
because people wanted sweetness to it and raisin bran and things of that nature to help aid in colonicking the body when they're at their thing to get rid of the vapors instead of having the woman go and masturbate or whatever it may be or the guy but it it was mostly back then because of the faux pas of you know they didn't know why this you know why this woman became picked and and pale and whatnot yeah she just she just needed some good old alone time yep. but tony the tiger it's it's a it's a cereal brand. It's been there since the 1950s. You can't really... or I don't know when Tony the Tiger came up. I assume the 50s because that's when all the great mascots came out. I'm pretty um, sure, yeah. Yeah, but that's, that's the great age of advertising. Um, yeah. If you've ever watched Mad Men, do it. It's awesome. It's all about advertising and marketing. But um, it's just like... You don't you don't go after a serial mascot whose whole history is that they don't want you to masturbate. Now Cheetos the Cheetah, their PR team fucking rocked. Yep. That was fantastic. Tony the Tiger, he he ended it. They ended it really well. Yeah. Their their initial stuff blocking fucking everyone. It's kind of bullshit. Yeah. Cuz people were like, oh. um, we don't agree with the, what they're doing to you. But we're blocked anyways. Well, it's like the 1%, okay? I mean, come yeah. on, people. It's grow up. I mean, if, if, you, want, guys, if, you, want to get, if you want to get off the Tony the Tiger, commission an artist to get off the Tony the Tiger. Don't, don't, it, and as someone who's been into law, what you're doing is still considered sexual harassment. You can still get in trouble. This is not like a workplace issue. This is, sexual harassment is an issue that's global outside of the workplace as well. You could have technically got yourself in trouble for doing this. Um, um, but, but but what I want to say is I don't condone the Kellogg's because I really don't care about the whole fucking Tony the Tiger thing. It just, come on. It, it makes us look stupid for those 2% people who do that. And if you want to just say, you know, just, just you have someone create a fake Tony the Tiger account and go there and do it with that person. Don't give that poor guy who's got nothing else better to do his job all day is to answer and write out twitter quotes that's all that guy does don't give him a bad time i mean some people hell if i was that guy and i started getting those sexual things i probably would be all right with it because it'd be a mon get rid of the monotonous day but really it just don't um happen. it's actually one of those things inside well speaking for the fandom okay i can understand it sucks but Speaking as a person, I can understand where Kellogg went with that, because it is a kid-based serial, and I can see them wanting to protect the younger individuals from that kind of exposure. And that's where I call bullshit, because look at Chester Cheeto, it's a kids-based product, but they ran with it a lot better than... Eh, I'll argue that. Ch Chester the Cheetah is a product of the 90s. He was the cool mascot in the 90s, yep. and... He's marketed more towards teens and young adults and versus pot smokers. and possibly <laughs> versus versus Kellogg's, which is a family brand. Yeah, they are branded for family. But I'm also going to say, if you let your under ten year old have a Twitter account, you're fucked up. Oh, not, <laughs> well, not only that, uh, you know, how am I I'm not blaming him? But how am I not surprised that being in the fandom and knowing some of the, you guys, especially your young you youngins. Uh, how do I'm not surprised that some of the people who were making these lewd comments to Tony the Tiger were not under the age of 18, were probably under the age of 18? Yeah. Uh, they probably are, and I plan on making a video about that in itself. It just, I mean... Y'all kids need to check yourselves, because you're making the adults look like idiots. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Uh, as you know, as I said, as I see it, as I see it personally, I saw it in two folds. I saw it as a good PR for opposing companies, bad PR for the Kellogg's company, outright banning every single furry. You know. Yeah. Even even when people were trying to say, "Hey guys, knock it off with the cereal mascot." Yeah. yeah. I mean, and I see it this way. I actually, I thought about it. The night I read about it, because thank you to the Ranting Griffin retweeting it and making me actually go look it up, I thought about be following just to see if I got banned, but then I'm like, yeah, I don't really want to do that because it's just a waste of my fucking time. I can care 
the fuck less. You know, I don't really care. I could give zero fucks right now. Yeah, I I like Kellogg's Frog uh, Flakes, but I don't like them enough to follow Tony the freaking Tiger. I like Cheetos too, but you don't see me following Chester either. I, I follow. Mean, you meanwhile, me. meanwhile, the Twix Rabbit and Cocoa Puffs mascots are in the corner, being like, "Why do they get all the fun?" Bull, bull, <laughs> <laughs> bull! I call bullshit because I was flipping around, looking through F. Ironically enough, I was on FA before this week, um, and I was on there as soon as that happened. And if anyone knows FA, and you're logged in and you, you don't have it set to NSFW, the first front page is you know half it's like porn, 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 porn. Not porn, but really questionable. Porn, porn, porn. Oh my god, it's five seconds of not porn. But anyways, yeah, there was stuff there with Tricks the Rabbit and uh, the Cocoa Puff Bird. And that was like after the fact of that thing hitting public. And the thing is, when I, I read a few uh, uh, articles on it, and ironically enough, the articles were both good in taste for these people who wrote them, who probably weren't in the fandom, and both funny at the same time. So, kudos to the people who wrote decent articles on this whole Tony the Tiger thing. And, uh, I give kudos to the Chester people and other people who stepped up and, like, we don't care if you want to be weird or we don't care if you're furry or not. Just have fun. Oh, the, I think the best one that I saw was, uh, Wendy's, the restaurant, was role-playing with a fennec fox. It was adorable. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, a fennec fox walks up to the drafty window. And when he's just like, how can we help you today? And the fennec fox is like, ooh, 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 ooh. I was just like, oh my god, this is adorable. Yeah. Uh, I love... Goddamn the, Wendy's. Those are my favorite videos, though, is suiting, going out and buying food in fursuit. Just fucking hilarious. I've seen we did that once uh, in... Is it Novi or Novi, Michigan? At All for Fun 2009, like, a group of us went to the McDonald's down the street from the hotel mm -hmm. in suit and just got a ton of food. It was the best. Oh, uh, that happened at Midwest when I went there. Just, like, four people in costume went over to McDonald's. Yeah. I stopped, I stopped like, doing big fursuit walks like that, but only because I'm, like, super fat right now. <laughs> Super fat on cheat day. So <laughs> Russell, Russell, oh, no, no. <laughs> all right. So I think we covered the Tony Tiger funny right. incident. Um, like I said, people just you know con going back to uh, you know you want to surround yourself with and suiting and stuff like that. Be mindful of people around you. It, it's you know some people may my are really uncomfortable with it. It's it's kind of sad in this day and age where sometimes you can't make a lewd joke without somebody having a tizzy fit. But still, just think about the concept of how would you react if you're in those shoes? How would you react to yeah. someone saying lewd things about your so posed character that you're supposed to portray as over you know the Twitter or Twitter. FA? Like it it's common. You you should have common courtesy for people and their characters and the things that they have to perform with like don't go out of your way to make people uncomfortable it's just a dick move oh yeah and like i said i figure that 90 percent of the people who were making lewd conversations were probably under the age of 18 and a few that weren't really come on guys you 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 should know by now that there's other places to do this and yeah as a gtfu moment <laughs> not really that it's just like dude come on you're old enough, you've probably been in a fandom long enough to know that e you're on Twitter, yes you're hiding yourself behind a moniker, but you're also hiding yourself behind a moniker with a fursuit head as your profile picture or artwork from a, a from the fandom and just like Well while, while really? real life people won't know who you are. Yep. We will know who you oh, are. Of course. <laughs> the fandom will know who you are. People that see you at bowling, people that meet you at Fermi's, people that meet you at conventions, yep. they'll know who you are, and they'll know that you're a jackass. So just yep. don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Basically, that's where I'm going with that. Yeah, I just, I, I do find it funny, though. It just, like, I first saw it, I, I saw it because it was a tweet by two, and I'm like, what is he talking about? Is It's like, is it what taboo is now shit? in the fandom? Is it is it now that we can't draw Tony the Tiger? Is is has artists gone? We're done. No more. F 
And then I, I, you know, read more into it. It's like, oh, somebody stupid on the internet. GG, people of the fandom. Woo! We can't have nice things. This is why we can't have nice things. Yep. Because you guys take it too far. Yeah. I mean, if... if I, it, This would have been a perfect time to go... Just someone make a account that allows these people to go and just have fun with. Somebody this, did. I'm pretty sure they did. They did. They did. They they created a sub Tony the Tiger account where people can go and role play with this guy who's pretending to be Tony the Tiger. Enjoy, guys. Yep, it's great. <laughs> All right. Um, I think the last and final topic has been kind of been on off and on in my mind. We were talking about me and Ryan were talking about it yesterday, and it just brought up the situation, which I don't understand, but we'll get into it. My Little Pony and the fandom. Oh man, there's this is a heated issue and heated debate. I have yeah, I have some friends who both are My Little Pony fans, but they will not show or share things of My Little Pony in the fandom sites that they are part of because whatever purpose. I don't see there's a difference. A lot of people don't see it as a difference, but then there's also that. But I guess we're like the five percent, and everybody else is like a bajillion percent. Of like we're anti My Little Pony. Explain, please, because this young pup does not understand it <laughs> one bit. Because I just see it as fucking My Little Pony, both furry and non. It's furry art. And, you know. I don't like the. Don't get me wrong. I don't understand the the cartoon. I watched it or tried to. I don't get it. Okay, so from what I understand, there's there's basically two schools of thoughts on the My Little Pony or furry thing. One is that My Little Pony is furry because it's anthropomorphic animals. And the other is that My Little Pony isn't furry because it's My Little Pony and its own its own fandom, its own canon. It can't be connected to furry because furry is just so... It's, it's such a wide blanket that My Little Pony does not want to fall into it. And... From my perspective, the most the people that are most militant about it mm-hmm. are generally the My Little Pony fans. They're like, no, I'm not a furry. I'm not a deviant like that. I'm not weird like that. And it's just like, well... You're just as bad. You're just as weird. And if not worse. I mean, okay. I'm not going to say if not worse because I've met... <laughs> <laughs> I have stories, but... So do no, I. I've, I've got tons of stories about... My Little Pony fans, and and I've got tons of stories about furry fans. Oh, but um, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna say it right now. Furry fans are more weird than My Little Pony fans, just in the amount of weirdness that we get into. <laughs> We're all weird. I think I think again, going harking back to the the great grandfather bird, um, we it we're all weird, and if we weren't weird, then. I don't think we'd be in the fandom. No, we are all super weird. Yep. That's My Little Pony fans, furry fans, we are all super weird. It's just that bronies are so niche <laughs> that they can only be so weird, whereas furry is so broad that right. it encompasses all of the weird. Right. Um, <laughs> I, I've yet to see... Well, no, I can't say that. I was going to say I've yet to see My Little Pony, like, goo tentacle porn, but I have. So, <laughs> so have I. <laughs> okay, uh, and, and I have to jump off on the subject, uh, since we are on this. Um, yeah, you cannot say that My Little Pony is not considered in the fandom. If you go to a specific website that starts with an E and ends with a 1, 95% of the stuff that's on that website is, pony. is My yeah. Little Pony stuff. Yeah. You, know, you have to custom tag it so that it doesn't show up. It's it's insane how much My Little Pony stuff is on that website. Why can't we see sixty one? By the way. Oh no! I just I was making a joke. Okay. <laughs> no, that, that's completely open. I was just making an innuendo joke. Um, but no, I mean, I I I gotta say it's um. It, see, bronies are the ones that don't want My Little Pony to be part of furry fandom. Furries are totally fine with. Uh, the majority of furries that I've met yes. are totally fine with bronies being. A part of furry fandom. Bronies are the ones that are like, I'm not a furry, but I love My Little Pony. It's just like Zootopia. It happened the other day. Someone was like, I'm not a furry, but goddamn, this tiger can take me home. 
he is someone that I'd like to snuggle with. Yeah, I saw that Twitter. You saw that thing. Twitter yeah. thing. I see. Um, let's see. How many people have I seen retweet that? You, Nova, two, I think, retweeted it. Yeah. Oh, my God, people. <laughs> but it's, it's super true. It's going to happen with Zootopia fandom. It happened with My Little Pony fa fandom. But they're like, I'm not a furry. But these anthropomorphic horses, goddamn. <laughs> it's just like, okay, I get it. I get it. And it, it, well, the thing is, it, the funny thing is, I don't understand some of the aspects of, oh, we don't want to be in the fandom because you're deviants, but then you have the subsect in your your fandom, Clopper. the Cloppers, yeah. and they're like, everybody looks at them three times worse than the fandom as a whole, and if you look on E621, it's full of Clopper stuff, so it's like, I don't get it. And it's, like I said, I have friends who are both furries and bronies, but they they divide themselves so harshly on it. I'm like, dude, you like both. Just, you know, m don't be a stand-up person and just migrate the two. Make, sh you know, show that we can be friends. Kage. 20 years ago, 20 years ago, yep. it was the same thing with Pokemon fandom. <laughs> Pokemon fans were like, totally not a furry. And you know what? That could be true for the people that want to be straight-up Pokemon players. But anyone who is like, no, seriously, these Pokemon? Man, I want to be Flareon. I'm super into being a Flareon. Yep. Let's Flareon this up. Yep. They're furries now. Oh, they just are. And the thing is, there are Pokemon fursuits out there. I've seen a few of them. Good ones, too. Yeah, not, there's tons of them out there. Not the Pikachu ones, though. But, they're like, the, the Vaporeons and the Flay... There's they're, they're some good... But it's... It, because a lot of the Pikachu ones look like the the mascot costume that you can get, and just yeah. sad. But the super cute Japanese Pikachu's though, I would uh -huh. I would wear one of those. I would bounce around and I would be like the cutest little fat Pikachu ever. You've seen the new ones, right? Yes, they're yeah. super fucking cute. Oh my god! It, it, <laughs> it, it, it's the thing is we're opening we are opening doors into the My Little Pony fandom. I've noticed because. Kage is good friends with um, BronyCon chairman. Yeah. And, you know, they do things and they've done things together and they've integrated into the fan in, into um, both fandoms uh, conventions. So I, it's yeah. it's opening up. So, I, I, to, to talk on that, um, Kage had the AnthroCon booth at BronyCon. Brony, yeah, BronyCon. Mm -hmm. And Manned it, and people were interested in coming because yeah. anthropomorphic animals. Why the fuck not? And then you get people who are like, "Oh my god, the furries are here." Yeah, who invited them? <laughs> yeah, who invited them? And the chairman's like, "I did," and they look like, "Oh, sorry, boss, sorry, sir," and walk away. It's like, oh, it's like another story. Uh, Kage went to England to do a uh, convention out there, and it was an anime convention, and it turned out to be, it's one of his big stories, it turns out he's the only one that showed up, the big, you know, the big timers, he went from being a C-list, uh, you know, C-list person to being the only person there, and everybody's like, well, you're coming back next year, right? <laughs> it's like, we love the fandom, you're like, and he's like, yeah, I'll come back, I'm sure, I'll entertain you, if you guys pay for me to come out, I'll be back. It's like, that's that's just the fandom in in a nutshell. We you know, we we integrate. We like to we like to entertain wherever we can. Yep, and we integrate very easily. We're into like the, lots of groups. We're like the in we're like that blobbish creature that can go into a square peg hole, a circle peg hole. You know, we we fit in each niche hole without no problems. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not a furry, um. but <laughs> I'm not a furry, but goddamn that thing looks so cute. It's like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're you may not be you're, furry, but you're you have an interesting yet. kink yet or <laughs> or whatever it may be. I mean, it's just hilarious. And I I just I do wonder. I really do wonder how many people who go to E621 that are bronies and that are cloppers use that site more than uh the furry fans. Furries. Yeah. yeah. And I'm I'm pretty sure you'd be surprised. I'm pretty sure it's like numbers are just yeah. So, Draco, you were going to say something? I forget. <laughs> we cut you off. I'm sorry. Oh. 
I, uh, like I said, I don't have any problems with it. I've had friends who were diehard bronies. I, in fact, one of my supervisors when I worked for um, Amusement Park, he was a diehard brony fan. And, you know, he's like, you, we, he'd sit there and talk to me about it. And I, I look at him and I nod, you know, interestingly. But for me to watch the show, no, I just couldn't. And it's just... Oh, wait. Hmm. I remember... Okay. Yay! I was going to say it's uh, when it comes to MLP community, furry community, whatever community it is, a group of people it is. I live in an area to the point where it's just nowadays I just don't care. It's like you can be however you want. I'll accept you for who you are because. I live in the north. I live in the south of the north in Wisconsin. So, uh, living on the west coast like you two do, it's like open. People are able to do more stuff and not be judged by the pure standards. Yeah. In Wisconsin, you don't get that. Until two days ago, I didn't know that whole human canine thing was as big as it was over here. In the you, you, mean, you mean puppy play? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that was as big as it was in the United States because I'm in Wisconsin and everyone's just like bigots over here. I hate to say it, but yes, anyone from Wisconsin that that huge bigot state. Puppy play. Uh, yeah. Someone needs it. it right leather on pops. Huh? The people that wear the leather pop clothing. Have you ever been? Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Puppy play. Uh, yeah, I've I've seen the racism, I've seen them homophobic all I've seen all of it while in high school and shortly after. Yeah. Well, so being is. truly exposed to that, it's gotten to the point where it's like I've seen the hate, I don't understand it, so I'm to the point where I just don't care how you are. Well, I got to inter- interject on that. Uh, high school doesn't matter where you are, even in the West Coast. Uh, high school sucks. Uh, high school is going to be homophobic, anti this, anti that, period. It's just when you leave high school and you go into ho- college or you go to, into the workforce, it will change in California compared to maybe a change in, you know, West Co- Wisconsin may keep the, the mindset of high school, but in, in California it's like, and we don't care. Most of us don't care. We get away from that, the high school of, you know, you can't be gay, we're anti, you're homophobic. But in high school, it's just as bad anywhere because it's high school, playing it simple. I mean, I, I like to think that it's getting better, but I think that the, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the issues are changing. Like, mm-hmm. instead of being freaked out that someone's gay, I think it's turning into something else entirely in this day and age. Oh, yeah. Uh, it... The thing I gotta say about people of the age of high school is ignore it or grow a backbone as soon as possible because it's not gonna go high away. High school's fucking toxic. Yeah, it's gonna be bad. And especially if you're in the fandom, you're gonna get bullshit from it. But either get used to it, have someone to talk to, or ignore it because it's not gonna go away until you're out of high school. And if, yeah. you, if you're in a progressive state, it, once you get out of high school, or if you move to a progressive state to go to college or work, you'll be completely fine. But you also got to understand, you're going to get it no matter what in your adult life. You'll get people looking at you and going, oh, you're this or that or or whatever, and you're just going to have to go, you're going to have to get used to it and, li- and live with it. Um, I, I will say this, as close minded as people are around here, it does feel interesting being the weirdest one in northern Wisconsin. <laughs> I, I would have to contradict that because you guys do have your own convention over there. Uh, so yeah, that's southern Wisconsin. Northern Wisconsin is like Mississippi. It's well, just I'm pretty total sure closed minded. I'm pretty sure there's furs in northern Wisconsin. There's furs everywhere. Yeah, there's Draco. Draco's in northern Wisconsin. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, cla- he, he likes to claim he's the only one. Oh. In 15 years, I have not seen another person in northern Wisconsin in the fandom. That you know of. It's not from lack of looking, that I can tell you. Hang on, hang on, give me a second, let me use my Google Foo. Google. 
<laughs> Red's already tried to help me with that. I've already messaged a couple people from Wisconsin. Like, the highest they were up is near the Green Bay area. Oh, man. This changed so much. What? Okay, one second. Uh, let me see if I kept this password the same. I have a Google search. Uh, not quite a Google search. But anyways, um, I th I think My Little Pony is going to be in the fandom, no matter if the My Little Pony people like it or not. We're not bad people. We we'll accept you. We accept the cloppers. We'll accept the normal My Little Pony people. We're just those type of people who accept anybody. Even though we'll bitch about certain groups, but we'll still accept them. Those little yeah, niche groups. Yeah, and a couple of my real life friends are actually are part of the Brony community. Like I actually, said, a couple I, of the only friends I. I like the artwork, both both aspects of the artwork, but I don't get the cartoon. Sorry, I just I just can't. I I tried. I've tried a couple times on different occasions. I just can't. And now they got. Uh, okay, I, I'm sorry, but. The new Equestria Girl thing, yeah, that's that's definitely become furry. Um, I'm sorry, that's definitely anthropomorphic right there. Um, they've gotten away from the My Little Pony, My Little Pony, ponies to anthropomorphic girlish yeah. girls anime type things. So, <laughs> yeah, you're in the fandom now, no matter how much you like it or not. If you're the fans of the new season, the new stuff, yeah, you're, you're in the fandom. Sorry. Yeah. Because either one person who's a My Little Pony art designer is either in the fandom or just like, fuck it, let's make them look human so we can get in that second niche group. I can tell you for a fact that there is fandom people working on My Little Pony. Well, there's, I'm pretty sure we're everywhere. Yeah. And that's the thing that people need to understand. We're everywhere. We do all sorts of jobs. We're all sorts of intelligences. We're not bad people. And, and I like it how people go, oh, we don't like the furries because they're kinky and they're and they're disturbed and all that stuff. And then these are the same people who walk into a, a BDSM clubhouse or they walk into a swappers group or they they cheated on their spouse or whatnot. It's like, we're just open. We're not hiding anything and we're not ashamed of anything. And we do the same things you do, but... We like to, when we're in our downtime and we're not doing kinky things, we're running around in a suit. It's a big deal. We're not any difference from you or Joe Smo over there who's creeping me out a bit looking at me like that, so. Yeah. Uh, so, anybody go, any conventions coming up that anybody's interested in? Vancouver! It's my home con and it's happening in one month from now. Awesome. We'll have to talk um, about that. We'll have to get, get a little um, down home information eh, for the people who are in the area that can go to Vancouver. Maybe they'll yeah. we'll talk about what we'll do a, a Vancouver vi uh, cast, and we'll talk about what's going on, what to expect, what may be happening, what not. Oh man, I will and tell you all I of this stuff. I still have to clear with my friend about Anthrocon. Oh, Anthrocon. Yeah. If they basically, if they don't have uh, reservations by next week, it's going to be pretty damn hard to find a reservation, period. Yeah, didn't AC just open their rooms? Yeah, like their they, room lock? Uh, they opened like them the other and, and then, day, and they're already filled up. Yeah, they opened and closed in 20 minutes. Yep. Virtually, but, virtually for those out there, little FYI, virtually for those who want to go to convention and you want to know when stuff happens, follow that convention's Twitter. Or follow the chairman's Twitter because the chairman and the convention will announce when hotels go on um, sale, and because you want to be able to hop on that as quickly as possible. Because I notified uh, uh, Draco that Anthrocon's thing, because I follow Kage, was open, and I said, "Hey, you better get your shit on that if you want to get a hotel it's room." Actually, it was actually kind of funny. He post he, he tweeted about the rooms being open and. Basically, when they were closed, like, not even... On the same day, he tweeted again about the... Is, the, is it safe to come out? Is yeah, it less clear? pretty much. That's that's how big that thing is. Anthro... The one thing I gotta say about California is we're the first... If that's correct, of what I saw in the little gif a while ago, someone tweeted, we are the first state to do conventions, but we're 
not as big as Anthrocon is. Oh, it's, it's true. Getting bigger. Well, we no. uh, for the confusion and and then the one in Southern California are big. But, Califer. Califer, but they're they're kind of getting small or compared to Anthrocon. So. Yep. And if actually interesting thing, if I heard if I heard correctly, if the majority of the conventions in the United States and Canada are strictly uh, charitable events, like outside of room costs, hotel getting their money, and all other money goes to charity. I think mm -hmm. the uh, mm -hmm. I think the fandom in a whole out of Canada and the U.S. are the single largest uh, contributor to charities. Yeah, charity event going on. Uh, if anybody watches the wine stream, do so. Uh, last one that Kage had had um, Al Alakai? Alkali, Alkali Bismuth, who runs a convention in Wisconsin for Squared. And he was talking about comparison of how much charity-wise. And he was talking about how his charity almost made it to $10,000. And the, the charity was surprised. And he was surprised, being a small convention. And then asking Kage and Kage's like, I don't remember. It was a big number. But yeah, that's how much we are to give away. Yeah, if Anthrocon doesn't work out, I'm going to save up and go to that this fall. Yeah. The, to uh, help the local convention. Yeah. Um, and the biggest help you can, like, going to a convention and paying your membership fees to go in is, is a big help. But the biggest help you can give to your local conventions is to actually volunteer. Even if it's just for a couple hours. Mm -hmm. I'm just throwing it out there as oh, a convention going, organizer. It's going to be like its second year this year. I mean, last year I didn't even know it existed because I was just out of I was away from conventions, period. Yeah. So. I, I found it because I was looking around at YouTube's. Yeah, YouTube's. Yeah. But, oh. you know, pay... And, and buy the bigger package. There's a big. There's always a bigger package when you pay to get your tickets. Get the bigger package, and um, also go to if there's if you can't you know give time, go spend some time at a charity auction and buy things because that's also helpful too. Oh yeah, yeah. I always get the gold package when signing up for a convention because it's worth it. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, you you get the bag of free stuff, which in itself is not worth it. I mean, yeah, that is. is well, yeah. It's a goodie bag. Yeah, it's, but, it's worth it. The The other thing But that, you also get recognized by the VIPs of the convention and spend some personal time with them. Yeah, the, um, the other thing that a lot of conventions do that some people don't know when they buy a patron ticket or gold ticket or whatever the higher tiers are is that usually you'll have a lounge. Like a patron-specific mm -hmm. lounge. A where VIP you're, lounge. Or a VIP lounge or somewhere where you can go where you can hang out, and a lot of the times, the guests of the convention will be up there, taking a break from people, and you get free food, you get drinks, not like alcohol, but like soda, they usually have hot food, it's it's pretty fantastic. That one punch bowl that's maybe filled with water, <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> yeah, it was actually cool, in uh, 2011, I don't know if they do it anymore, because it is like, fucking three times bigger than it was, but... Midwest Fur Fest 2011, they actually had a thing where if you bought, like, the go the plus gold ticket, like, the gold ticket plus yeah. the extra $50, you actually got to spend some personal time with the chairman and have dinner with the guests of honor. Well, it's, yeah. uh, well, it's relatively cheap, too, folks. If you look at the tickets and then you look at the plus and you look at the... Because I was looking at way back when I was actually looking at Vancouver and I was looking at their elite package and I was like that's like five that's like 25 30 bucks more than the normal ticket it's like could I afford that yes if I scrounged up the money plus you know I had to pay by uh, yeah it would be expensive for me because I have to get a passport because I don't have one of them and then tr train ticket and but still it, it would have been not like not much of a difference to get the upgraded elite edition ticket by the way, if hmm. you're doing a land crossing into Canada, mm -hmm. all you need is an enhanced ID. Yeah. No, not necessarily a passport, but an EID or an enhanced driver's license if you're doing a land crossing rather than flying. It's like 25 bucks at your DMV and hmm. way less work than a passport. Hmm. Just saying. 
throwing it out there. Well, I still probably would get the passport, though, because a passport is also useful. I hate taking my, when I go do job interviews, I hate taking my uh, social security card with me. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm a paranoid person because of education and people I've worked with and stuff of that nature. I'd rather just use a passport because you can use it as a second form of identification. So. Oh, neat. So, in yeah, most jobs. So, it's like, okay, as long as you have a driver's license and a passport, you're all good to go. And I already know my social security card by heart. So, it's like, I'd just rather take a passport with me to the work interview than take my social security card. So, yeah, I think I'd probably get it. And it's not that expensive. It's like $110 to get both the passport and the ID card. That, like like the one that you're talking about that allows me to go to Canada and Mexico and Puerto Rico with just the card, not a fucking passport. I'm super jealous. It's $160 for hours. But it's also like a five-month wait period thanks to the whole terrorism mm. bullshit. Yeah, Homeland Security, man. Mm-hmm. But my ah. fingerprints are already in the system as it is, and I already have shit in the system. So it's Because you're a security professional, not because you're a criminal. Yeah, pretty much. It's like, it's like <laughs> I, I talk to people, it's like, hey, I've been to San Quentin. They look at me like, you've been to one of the biggest prisons in the United States? Like, yeah... Why? Field trip? Oh. School? <laughs> yes, yeah, school. It's like... Fair to you. Huh? No, it's just one of those moments where you have fun with them. You're like, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think... You know, I could talk about that. That was a fun field trip. One of my friends is... Um, was blonde hair, blue eyed. Oh. And we're walking to cells, and all I could say, all I hear, all we hear is, I'm behind, he's in front of me, I'm behind him, and all I hear from a cell is, white power! Oh, no. It's like, my friend's like, oh, shit. and my friend Sam looks back at me, he's from Uganda, he's like, what did they say? It's like, just keep walking, Sam, you're fine, just keep walking, ignore it. Yeah. Walk on, guys, walk just, on. Just, just walk on, dude. <laughs> don't go, don't, you don't need to be don't staying engage. here. Don't engage. Uh, I didn't. Could personally get to do one of those in school. I mean, my sister did, and it's great well, for her. It's, but it's not. It's it, like if I wanted to see area like that, I'd go talk to my neighbors. Well, it's not that everybody. It's not the whole scared straight thing like everybody thinks of. Because that's what the prisoners thought. No, we were going there because my teacher is the parole board member of San Quentin, uh-huh. I, and he was also friends with the commander on call. So we did it as an actual field trip, not as scared straight. So we got to meet inmates. We got to walk around the prison, and let's just say, uh, it yeah, don't don't if you know anybody who's in the field of uh, corrections, um, as a job, give them a hug, give them a high five, and tell them thank you because their job is fucking bullshit in the United States. And it actually shows how much power some of them have because these inmates that will kill a lot of people on site. Respect some of the people higher Res- up in the facility because it's respect. Because the inmate, the, the officer shows respect to the inmate, and it, the inmate will show will show respect back. And also the fact that you know, it's also one of those things that the inmate knows if they do something wrong, that person's not afraid to get their hands dirty. Well, yeah, not only that, but let's just say we were when we were talking with some of the life uh, lifers. Um, and stuff of that nature, because they they're joining us on part of the field trip. Uh, former, it was like, yeah, um, they would pretty much de- defend their lives for us because it looks good to the parole board. Yeah. So they would risk their lives to save ours. So if they you know get shanked or stabbed and they survive it, there's like, oh, you saved kids. So, eh. but yeah. Anyways. Yeah. yeah, that's a fun thing. But yeah, I'm That's actually smart of them, that because that might change your life sentence to only a few more years. Mm-hmm. See, I've I've never had any of these experiences. I'm just sitting here like, oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> what is is this real life? Yep, pretty much. Um, but yeah, yeah. It pretty much is. Um, god damn America, god damn. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, in Canada, they're still investigating the maple syrup, bro. Hey, hey, hey. The loss of our maple syrup reserve our is reserve. hugely important to our cultural identity. And meanwhile, people of the First Nation are going, oh my god. No. 
Canada, no. <laughs> we we have our own issues, and you're worried about maple syrup. Delicious, delicious maple syrup. Oh my god, I want to eat like a jug of maple syrup. I'm making myself so sick this cheat day. I just been nomming on mini eggs. I fuck. I feel so sick. <laughs> but that's the point of cheat day. Deviled eggs. Oh, well. <clears throat> All right. I think that's about it. I think we've exhausted our topics. Yeah, and we've gone on. We have for the last half an hour. Shh. Not really. This is real life. Um. Yeah. So, how about them things? I think I think we're about done, guys. Yeah, we are. Uh, I hope you guys. I'll end it up. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um. We will be doing this bi-weekly or weekly. Um, no promises. Um, um, I think next week we'll probably... Next topic will definitely... We usually don't talk about topics, but I think next topic will be definitely on... Um, first suit maintenance? First suit maintenance. And then at the end of the month, proceeding on to Vancouver, we'll be talking about Vancouver for those who are looking to jo go to a convention in the West Coast area of the United States and Canada, or who are traveling across that are also going to it or may be interested in going to it. And I reason why I say West Coast is because it's a really easy travel for a lot of those people in the area. So I hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you next time. Uh, Rory will be, in, will be joining us from now on when her time emits and permits. Um... Novelinksa will may or may not return for the time being. It's not like we, we didn't get rid of her or anything. She's just very, 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 very busy. Um, Such busy cat. Yeah, I actually, I'm thinking of hopefully she records. She might be doing some things. Hopefully she records it and we can just snag that and put it on the channel. So you guys check it out too. We'll see you guys later. Take it easy. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.